It's 9.15, we'll start with our next presenter, Anthony Phillips. He is a student in geography, and the title of his research is Documentation and Analysis of Flood, Flash Flood Prone Areas in Subwatershed Basins in Pulaski County, Virginia. Thank you, Ms. Grimes. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Anthony Phillips, and I'm an upcoming senior in the geography department at Virginia Tech. Uh, this summer I had the opportunity to do some research over in Pulaski County regarding flash flooding and I'll be presenting those results uh, in the pre this presentation today. Uh, this is just a quick overview of uh, the presentation. First I'll discuss the purpose of my research and uh, why it is important to flash flooding. I'll also go into how the research was uh, conducted and what information was collected in the field. And finally, I'll give a summary of the upcoming technical report that will be made available to both the National Weather Service and the County of Pulaski. The main purpose of uh, this research was to identify, measure, and analyze areas in Pulaski County that were uh, prone to flooding. Uh, ESRI's ArcGIS software package, which uh, is just a basic geography and uh, mapping program, uh, was used to identify streams that were within 25 feet of a major roadway. Additionally, all subbasins uh, that contain survey points have been mapped and will uh, be presented in this research. Final results will be compiled into an operational handbook as well as a DVD. This will uh, hopefully aid forecasters in issuing flash flood warnings over sections of Pulaski County. And to further aid the operational forecaster, uh, all data will be overlaid in Google Earth and this will be accessible from all the workstations in the National Weather Service. So, why do we care about flash flooding? Well, it can occur nationwide, and it is the number one uh, weather-related killer in the United States. It kills more people than uh, tornadoes, kills more people than hurricanes. And I've highlighted uh, flat, uh, small stream flooding because this is what my research involves, but these are the four different types of flooding that uh, can occur in Pulaski County. Um, ESR's ArcGIS uh, was the basis for this program and my project initially began in uh, early June by downloading information from the United States Geological Survey and specifically their uh, USGS 2007 uh, Tiger uh, line data. This was imported into ArcGIS for Pulaski and neighboring counties and only the main roads were used for uh, identification purposes and for this research since most of the unnamed roads would probably not use, be used by the general public that much. I then used the proximity tools within ArcGIS to plot all locations that are within 25 feet of a stream. And this is what uh, represents my concern and the National Weather Service's concern for flash flooding. The software returned uh, 651 different points for the entire county. And in areas in southern Pulaski County that you can see here, these are mountainous, rugged areas, so there's not many roads, and they're mostly private owned by the uh, Boy Scouts of America. So, with only two weeks of field work uh, available to do this, uh, I had to balance my time pretty much. So, I broke down the county into 12 sections, and each of these would be covered within a day's time. And I uh, configured them where I could get around real easy with the existing road networks, and I could cover all my points within one day. And each of these sections has about 50 or 60 points per, per section. I had a GPS unit and laptop in my vehicle, and this provided me with uh, access to the internet and with uh, the GPS I could find my way around real easy through the county. Didn't have no trouble at all hardly. Um, each of these following items were collected at the sites uh, with the main four being these, uh, these last four here. The stream flow, well the distance from the road to the stream, the angle of depression, and the upstream and downstream picture. Um, like I said the road and stream uh, information was pretty much on the uh, map as far as what I could gather and I didn't have to do that all that much but uh, I did have to take some measurements and check <coughs> that down. Um, once I arrived at my survey point both Sarah Prescott and myself started taking measurements. Um, Sarah served as my field assistant for the project uh, as did Peter Corgan. Um, I thank both of them for their help. Uh, they was, uh, helped me get this project done really fast. So. But while uh, Sarah took pictures, I went out and measured everything. Um, she took the upstream and downstream pictures, and I measured the distance from my eye level down to the stream edge, and also measured 
the angle of depression from my eye down to the stream edge. And uh, for both those measurements, I use just basic measuring tape and also a clinometer, which just measures uh, basic angles. Um, this is a picture of me taken by Sarah. When I collect the data, I first collect the distance from my eye down to the stream edge with a basic measuring tape, that's represented by D here. And then also I collect the angle of depression, so that would be a vertical measurement from this vertical here down to the stream edge. And then once I have that, it gives me a right triangle, and that will give me, through some basic trigonometry, the height of this triangle here for side H. But we need to know the flash uh, flood prone areas, so we need to know the measurement from if this water was to rise vertically, how high it would have to take to reach the roadway. So to find that, I have to subtract a certain, certain number. Well, I know that I'm exactly six feet tall from my eye down to the ground, <laughs> so I subtract six, and that gives me the flood stage for this particular area. And then here's my equation, which is just a basic trigonometry equation that you can use. Um, for the final results, uh, these will uh, be compiled in an operational handbook, and we were able to complete the survey within about 10 days. I originally scheduled 12 to 14 days, so we got it done in record time. So I covered the entire county, and it wasn't easy, but it, it was doable. So <laughs> didn't speed, didn't get no, get no tickets or anything. <laughs> um, we were, uh, the reason for that was we, we was able to double up on a couple of the sections each day, so that saved some time. And then in the evening, after I got done with the section, I would just sit down at the computer and take the uh, Excel format spreadsheet and import everything into that. And then that made it real easy to export to ArcGIS. And then once in Arc, I was able to uh, progress everything through five different uh, types of colors, and those will be shown here in just a minute. Um, this gave you the flood stage in a, in a color-coded uh, symbology. Um, here's a uh, picture of one of the maps that I created for one of the sub-basins. Um, this sub-basin had three different survey points, um, with the orange one being the highest uh, potential for flooding in this sub-basin. And you can see here the uh, symbology. So orange would represent a uh, rise in water level of one and a half to three feet. And then uh, also down here is the PFAF number. This is what the Weather Service would use when they use their software at the uh, office to reference everything back to my maps and my research. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also another page that will go along with the report. Uh, this just has the information about those points that you saw, and it also lists any of the previous flash flood records that the National Weather Service uh, has on file. Also listed are the land use and land cover characteristics for that basin. So if it's mostly forested areas, well, it will have it. So you, you can see here that basin right there was 96% forest. Um, with only seven uh, one hundredths of a percent as pavement. And also listed will be all the different soil types for that basin. Um, some of the soil types and some of the basins don't have all their soil data, so you have, I have a list of those and, and all the information is complete with those, but that's something that uh, somebody else will have to identify someday. Um, 